What's going on guys? Welcome to another video. Today we are going to try and tackle a project I've been putting off. As I look at the damage that I'm trying to fix, I'm thinking to myself that can be fixed in an easier way. And if it isn't able to be fixed, I can try to make it look better. So hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Um, it's going to probably be a process, but I'm hoping that the outcome or the results look better than what it does right now. So this area right here is what I'm talking about. Basically was thinking about actually just changing this fender to another one um, that doesn't have this big uh, crease in it and sanding it down, repainting it to match the car, all of that. However, the more I look at this, I could most likely save this. So what I'm going to go ahead and do today, or right now, is I'm going to unbolt this fender, take the front bumper off because I have a lot of I think this is Bondo, I'm not really sure what it is. This right here, this is a huge crack. I want to try to put some epoxy in the back of it just so that it looks better. This right here, this this needs to go. It just it looks ugly and I don't like it. I definitely want to smooth this out, make this not look so bad because I want to get nice pictures of this car. This car definitely deserves a lot better than what it has going for right now. So if I can fix this, and it does, it's not gonna be perfect. There's a pinch right here that I don't know if I'm gonna be able to take out, but if I can do something that's better than this, then I mean, at least I tried. I will definitely have to respray this, and I'm gonna have to probably blend it into the hood and to the bumper as well. Um, but we're just gonna kind of take a little hack at it and see how it goes. So first, Pull the bumper off, put the hood up, take the fender off, and uh, so yeah, that's kind of what we're gonna do. By the way, this shirt I got from uh, Kubo Creations. Christian, thank you. I appreciate you uh, letting me get one of these shirts, and uh, his Instagram will be right here. So if you need any graphic design work or any logos or anything like that done, hit him up. He can make you all kinds of stuff. He's a really, really good brother. He will not steer you wrong. He is priced very well for what his product is. So I hope you guys go check him out, go support. This shirt is very, very, very comfortable. And even better is this face is totally, the stitching is like perfect. I don't know if you can see it, but like, the line is not, this is where the seam is right here and it's not off at all, so. Took both headlights out. Plastic basically they pushed out because where the contact hit, it pushed everything out. And I'm also gonna take this, yeah, so you see all that in there. So that got crushed when it hit. It, this basically took the impact, so I'm gonna have to take that out, pound that all out to mimic this one, which I'm glad that this one's good because I can see exactly where this has to be. I have to be really careful though with this because the more I pound on it or the more like I try to like reshape it, the um, less rigidity the metal's gonna have. And since I don't know how to weld right now, if it has less rigidity, 
um, then if this happens again, this whole thing is gonna just crush like a pancake instead of holding it. The fender of damage is off. Well, that clip's not going back on. Yeah, no one here. All right, guys. The bumper is off. And now the SC looks so bare. I kind of dig it though. I'm not gonna lie, but. We're definitely not gonna run it like this. So, what's going on? Welcome to the next day. So, currently have these fenders outside. I went ahead and got this. This is a body and fender set. Uh, it's dollies that uh, end hammers that are designed for bodywork so I'm really excited to use this I don't really know how to but I told myself I need to get the right tools if I'm going to try to make a product that looks decent so um, let's also up the bumper out so let me go ahead and grab that real quick I'm gonna have to figure out a way that I can stand it upright or maneuver it so that uh, I can get all the cracks to line up correctly. Because um, right now, as you can see, the crack is kind of split, so I need to find a position. I'm probably gonna lay it down like that way, like the f front of it on the ground. Um, all right, I'm gonna set that up, and then I'm also gonna set this up One. Oh, they putty over that. What the heck? All right. So to make this as super easy, as quick as possible, I put some Dawn. I put that with some water in this, and then I am using my wash mitt to uh, get in all the nooks and crannies. I just want to get all of this dirt off as best as I can because this stuff is caked on there. We're going to use some of these bad boys. I can't stress how important this thing is when it comes to uh, doing this type of work because uh, this heat gun, even though this paint is all messed up, what this thing's gonna do is it's actually going to let the metal move a lot easier because you're gonna going to make it softer. Bear in mind that when you do make it softer, it's gonna lose rigidity. So try to only heat it up a certain amount of times and then let it cool um, because if you keep 
uh, heating it up and you know repetitively it's going to lose its integrity and next time it gets dented it's going to basically get smashed like it's just going to fold in and it's not going to have any kind of structure so looking at this one right here actually this part right here is fine it got a little crunched just a little bit but um i'm mainly going to focus on this part right here just to get it as straight as this one but uh yeah the only thing that really got really damaged is is this part right here it it pushed it got pushed back so all i have to do is just make it nice and flush and then we'll be good um, i'm gonna use this dead blow on uh so that i can get kind of um the main crease out um, and then I am going to go to, I think I'm going to use, I think I'm going to use this one first. The, this right here is a pinch point where it's actually this part right here to go like that. So we're going to have to relax it so that once it gets back in the car, it'll set right. The point of this is not to make more high spots, it's to make um, this all nice and as flush as possible and it's kind of popping back into place. I'm going to go ahead and try to heat this up one more time. Now what we're going to do is we're going to use this, uh, I believe it's the high crown pick hammer. And then we're gonna use the wedge dolly. Right now is the most important time to heat this up. We're gonna be using the hammer on the outside to pull it up. We want to make sure that the whole fender and the paint kind of gives us a little bit of leeway and it doesn't scrunch up on us, so. I think what I'm also going to do is I'm going to try to see if I can hit this out a little bit. Again, guys, I am no professional. I am just doing this to show you that you can do anything that you put your mind to. And I'm putting my mind to doing body work. Actually, I'm going to use this heel dolly. I'm going to use this instead because I can do a nice flat surface on the back.
seen all these marks right here trying to figure out with my finger where the highs and lows are and then popping them out as I can I think I'll be able to get right to this dent too I think this is gonna be the hardest part though because it's hard to get a nice swing right in there but we're gonna try our best that's looking like a pretty big crease right there We're gonna go ahead and uh, primer this thing. Ow, excuse me. I didn't feel good. Hit my crown too, geez. This thing's trying to take me out. This thing doesn't want to get fixed apparently. Hmm, no, actually, it's coming out kind of nicely. So now that we have all of this pretty much where it needs to be, um, I'm going to sand down the places where the paint is covered. Get some primer on it and uh, make sure that it doesn't rust. So we have some 320 grit on this uh, pad. The most important thing about the foam pad is you want it so that when you get into like the curves, it can squish down so you're not having a hard edge on it um, it's very light just to get all of the paint off go down to bare metal so that we can spray it and make it all look nicer so when we put it on the car just make the car look complete again and then by the way this is a dual action electric sander i wanted to get the electric one because i want to basically compare how the electric one is to the air one because not everyone has an air but everyone can get one of these because everyone has an outlet so uh, i kind of want to compare how well um this one does compare to like a air sander uh this one is variable so it has the speeds the reason why you want that super importantly is so that if it's one speed and you go over it it might dig into the fender or the paint um and burn it so this is gonna let you control where, how much it goes. So we're gonna go probably, we're gonna stick to a three and see how it goes from there. The most important thing about this is you don't want to push into the fender. You actually just want to lightly hold it on so that the sander does all the work because if you push into it, it's going to leave divots and you don't want to divot in. You don't want to push it in. You want to just let it ride over because you can already see the high spots that it's creating. What we mean when we say high spots is right here is probably the perfect example. This high spot right here, you can see where the, um, the metal has been shaven off but underneath here where all that is, that's a low spot. So it basically, the sander's hitting that spot before it hits this spot. So that's why it's called a high and low spot. So all of this down here is gonna be a low spot because obviously I wasn't hitting it well, but it's hard to get in on that. Whatever gets hit first is a high spot. Whatever doesn't get hit is a low spot. That's kind of like the best way of explaining it. We're going to uh, just spray a little bit of this primer. We have a high build primer, and what this is going to do is it's going to spray on and it's going to build high. So what that means is basically it's going to put more primer material on so that when we go ahead to sand it, primer that's on there is going to stay on longer so you don't have to, you know, primer it again, so to speak. So that's what we're going to go ahead and do, and I'll be right back. So what you want to do is you want to take a clean towel like this, this, and you want to spray the degreaser on it. When you wipe it on, it's going to take all of that off and give you a nice smooth surface without any grease on it.
this hole doesn't line up with the threads. Um, that's really the only issue we have right now, at least. Um, I mean, to be honest with you, everything looks really, really nice. A little bit as well, this right here, because the holes, they line up, but um, the holes on the outside and the holes on the inside aren't true to where they need to be. So we're gonna go ahead and tinker with this. This is the hardest part about body that I feel is that you can get it looking as nice as possible with another fender, but then when it goes up to making sure everything is aligned, that's where it will catch you, where you won't actually notice it until you put it on to the body and then nothing, you know, lines up. But, all right, so we're just going to end it here because I finally got the fender back on. I finally got everything where it needs to be as far as where the fender is lining. When you open the door, you don't hear any kind of contact, which is was definitely important to me. Um, the headlight does have a little bit of gap right here that I have to fix. It's very minor. With this car, it's really step by step. Um, what it is, is it's kind of like taking a puzzle that you don't really know how to put together, taking it all apart, and then putting it back together. This car is giving me so much trouble, but it just feels so good every single time I take it apart and put it back together the way it's supposed to be and do the work because it shows me that I can do something if I put my mind to it. And not only just that, it shows me that this car, even though it's been very, very mistreated, can still give you what you want out of it. You just have to put the time and effort and the work into it. I am going to end this video here. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you guys haven't already, smash that thumbs up for me. Smash the thumbs up for this fender, even if it looks terrible right now as far as the, uh, as far as the primer. This right here is, to me, the most important thing. Like, it actually doesn't look crushed in. It looks way better. If it was paint matched, like, I don't even know if you could tell the difference. Like, this car, to me, proves that I can do it. And this is, like, my dream car. So, with my dream car, I want to put every effort I can into making it look the best it can be. Because that's what it deserves. And also, leave a comment down below. What do you guys think of before and after? I don't even know. Like, I even, looking at this, I forget what the before damage looked like. To me... That's all that matters is that I can see the difference and I can appreciate how much effort and time I put into it. So that being said, guys, thank you guys for watching. Appreciate it. I'll see you guys in the next episode. And always stay positive, guys, and stay true to who you are. Shoots.